Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. A lot of times when you're taking pictures, your camera cannot capture the full dynamic range, leaving you with flaws such as overexposed skies. With HDR photography, you can fix this by taking multiple photos, some darker and some lighter, and then merge them together using Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop's HDR merge tools. But HDR merge is very basic, and the results are very basic as well. Typically, you need to do further editing in Lightroom or Photoshop. But what if there's another tool that will let you create better HDR photos, yet it's still easy to use? In this video, we're going to be reviewing Aurora HDR. One of the first things that you'll notice is also why I would consider the best selling point of Aurora HDR, and that is that it's very beginner friendly. You can open your own photos, or if you don't have any yet, you can load these sample images to play around. You can also just use one photo, but obviously you'll have less flexibility in regards to recovering details. I'm going to be loading this set of photos shot in Iceland. You can import as many exposures as you need, and they don't need to be evenly bracketed. For example, this set here has a lot of photos, and I'm just going to delete two exposures, and you're going to see later that it'll still work fine. For the options, you can choose to enable alignment in case you didn't shoot it on a tripod or if your photos just aren't aligned for some reason. Enable ghost reduction in case your photos have moving objects like people or cars. Enable color denoise, which will by the way only work with raw files. And finally, enable chromatic aberration removal in case your photos have some color fringing around the edges. By the way, if you use Lightroom, you can also load the photos directly from Lightroom to Aurora HDR. It works both as a standalone software and as a plugin. Once it's done loading, you can begin editing. I like to start off with the presets at the bottom. Aurora HR comes with tons of presets that you can pick from. I'm going to go into categories and let's check out some of Trey's presets. As you can see, there's a preview for each effect and if you hover over it, you can adjust the opacity. I'm going to choose this one here as a starting point and start editing the settings. I'm going to start with the exposure. As you can see, there's tons of dynamic range that we can work with and the photo blends in very well together. There's also a ton of HDR specific settings such as Smart Tone, which you can use to recover details in the highlights and shadows. HDR Structure is sort of like the clarity setting in Lightroom. It's a great way to add contrast to the edges. The HDR Microstructure setting targets finer surface details. By the way, these settings can emphasize noise in your photo depending on how much of it you use. But right below that is HDR Denoise. HDR Denoise reduces noise using their own algorithm that tries to preserve edge details. You can fine tune how much smoothing it does and the boost setting is useful for seeing what's happening. For example, I like to set the boost to around 50-100% to so I can see what's happening and then lower it back down when I'm done. Image Radiance is pretty interesting. It basically adds a glowy effect which is how people create those soft and dreamy HDR photos. If you prefer more natural results, just keep this at zero. The polarizing filter setting will help you get those deep blue skies that you get if you were to use a polarizing filter on your camera. By the way, it doesn't perform magic, so it can't remove reflections like a real polarizing filter. HDR Detail Boost sounds really cool, and it kind of is. You can use it to sharpen your photo, but unlike traditional sharpening, you can control the amount of sharpening based on the small, medium, or large details. The large details being the bigger and more obvious lines in your photo and it can sharpen your photo without introducing halos. Glow is sort of like the dehaze setting in Lightroom, but with the slider adjustments like the opposite way. You can increase it to add this ethereal glow, or decrease it to emphasize the details. Top and bottom is very useful. It lets you adjust the basic tonal and color settings separately for the top and bottom half of your photo, so it's really useful for landscape photos. The rest of the settings are pretty much the same as what you'll find in Lightroom. So those are the main settings that you can adjust. Aurora HR also supports layers and masks, so you don't even need to go back into Photoshop. For example, you might have noticed that the clouds in my photo look a bit weird. What I should have done was take the photos faster. But there's a fix. Click on the plus sign and add a new image layer. I'm going to import one of these exposure to replace the sky with. Next, click on the brush icon and choose whether you like a brush 
gradient, radial, or luminosity mask. I'm going to choose a regular brush. And in the option bar, I'll set it to erase mode. I'm going to erase the foreground and the area where the sun is. You can also add an adjustment layer. Let's say that we want to make the area around the sun a little bit warmer. Click on the plus sign and add a new adjustment layer. Next, click on the brush icon and this time I'm going to choose radial mask. Before I draw, I'm going to change the temperature setting to something different so that you can see what's happening. Now I can draw a circle that expands out from the sun and then click on the invert button to make it affect the inside of the circle. Now you can adjust the settings any way you like or you can pick a preset. I'm going to go into the landscape category and choose a warm skylight preset. And we're done. Here's how the image looks like before and after. As you can see, Aurora HR is quite easy to use and at the same time it's powerful enough that most of the time you can do everything in Aurora HDR without going back to Lightroom or Photoshop. So how does Aurora HDR compare with the competition? Obviously Adobe's HDR Merge tool isn't as advanced, but there are some noticeable differences in the way it blends the images together. First of all, I find that the way it dealt with the moving clouds in my photo is completely different and it's a great example. Adobe's Photo Merge tool tries to merge the clouds together which works good in some areas but not so great in others. Aurora HDR does it differently. It blends the clouds evenly, but it also leaves a repeating pattern. In terms of sharpness and dynamic range, they're both pretty much the same. They also both create a 16-bit file. The only difference is that Lightroom creates a DNG file and Aurora HDR creates a PSD file. They're both 16-bit, you can edit them in Lightroom and there's still that huge dynamic range difference compared to a regular JPEG photo. The PSD files that Aurora HDR creates do have layers, but they're the layers that you created in Aurora HDR and there's not much you can do with it aside from turning them on and off because they're just flattened rasterized layers. Overall, I would say Aurora HDR is one of the best HDR software that you can get. The best thing about Aurora HDR is that it brings the fun back into HDR photography. I started doing HDR photography 11 years ago and at first it was really fun because you can take photos of a scene and then there's this mystery of not knowing how it looks until you go home and process it. But all that post-processing became tedious and I got bored of it. After trying out Aurora HDR, it's sparking my interest and motivation back. Aurora HDR throws away the boring steps in a typical HDR tone mapping workflow and makes it easy and fun again. It feels rewarding and it's amazing how much you can transform your photo. The results are good as well. Whether you want something natural or something surreal, you can do it with Aurora HDR. The current price is $100 and the license lets you use it on 5 computers. There's a free trial that you can download and if you decide to buy it, you can use the coupon code Danny's Tips for $10 off.